Ivan Eland, he's a senior fellow at the Independent Institute in Washington. Uh, evening to you, Ivan. Good to see you. Yet again today, the Libyan leadership's proposed negotiations, hasn't it, with the rebels and with NATO forces. Why is there being no response back from them as yet, do you think? Well, I think they think they're winning and they're going to take uh, Tripoli. Uh, they have uh, the city surrounded, and I think it, it may be the end game. Uh, oftentimes, though, when if the if the um, Gaddafi is using mercenaries or dedicated forces uh, to him, tribal uh, allegiances, it could still be messy fighting in the city. But I think the rebels think they have the advantage at this point, and uh, they're being helped by the NATO uh, uh, bombing and that sort of thing. So I think they think they're almost ready to uh, uh, take Tripoli. I don't know if you caught uh, any of our last report there. There was an independent journalist, Lizzie Phelan. I spoke to her last night. She's been on the program again today, saying that the reports on some of the uh, media there, including Al Jazeera, are incorrect, as she's seeing it. She's looking around her and not agreeing with the, the seriousness of those reports. Whether or not that's to be believed, i.e. the seriousness of the reports, do you think we are any closer to seeing Tripoli turning into a bloodbath? Well, I think, yes, we are. Uh, it's, it's hard to say during war. You get rep one report uh, on one thing, and then it's contradicted by another. Certainly, the rebels have made gains. I've always said it was probably going to be tougher to get rid of Gaddafi than everyone thought, and so uh, I think that may be still the case, because I think when you get into a city, sometimes you have to take it uh, street by seat, street. Other times, uh, regimes just fall apart, and, and it's very rapid, so it's hard to say. Uh, what the how this is going to end, but I think we need to pay attention to the long term. This was, a, even if NATO and the rebels triumph, I think this was a, a mistake because we've already seen that all these anti-aircraft uh, missiles may be missing, these shoulder-fired missiles, which we've uh, avoided uh, any serious hit on a commercial airliner, but if Qaddafi gave those to terrorists, or who, who's, who are these rebels? We really don't know. Are, is there going to be tribal fighting? Is there going to be... Uh, uh, is Islamist takeover. We don't know. Uh, Qaddafi had been demonized uh, by the United States ever since Ronald Reagan. And the problem in the United States is when we demonize people like Saddam or Qaddafi, we eventually like to get rid of them. And that may, not, may or may not be a good idea. It caused problems in Iraq, uh, and it may cause problems in Libya as well. If you have chaos, uh, Islamists or uh, Qaddafi giving stuff to terrorists as one last uh, uh, you know, jab at the Americans. Saddam Hussein certainly left a nice uh, poison pill with guerrilla warfare for years. So who knows what Qaddafi had, in, had planned. I mean, he had since the 1980s to figure out that the United States might be wanting to get rid of him. So he presumably uh, maybe developed some sort of a plan uh, and um, uh, not only to get away or to uh, distribute these weapons to make it uh, uh, very hazardous to fly in commercial aircraft. Who knows? We don't know where these missiles are, and we don't know what's going to happen. The problem with the, all these things is war is very unpredictable, and when you start one, you don't know where it ends up. Ivan, I want to touch again back on the importance of the media and its, its role in warfare, how it can influence people, influence the way people are affected in it. I mean, how important has been the media coverage of what's going on in Libya so far? How much of a role does it have to play? Well, I think uh, in the Western media here, particularly in the United States, all the Western countries, the media has sort of been a cheerleading. You know, Qaddafi's uh, on the on the retreat; he's almost over. So, you're absolutely right. Maybe the the uh, reports are uh, exaggerated, but. Uh, uh, certainly the Western media is uh, hopeful because no one likes Gaddafi, and certainly I'm not defending his human rights record, but he, he was the leader of the country, and it seemed like the Western uh, countries just took advantage of a, of a rebellion to, to get rid of him. Uh, of course, they haven't really done that in Assad in Syria. They've been very slow uh, because Israel doesn't necessarily want to get rid of him uh, because they're scared what could happen there. But why isn't, doesn't the same thing apply in Libya? What could happen there we don't know and I think the media has been tends to cheerlead the, uh, for whatever government uh, you know the Western governments uh, they've certainly been in the coverage has been well the rebels are progressing the rebels are progressing but of been, course we've seen reverses I so one, it could be a reverse here too one last quick thought we're a bit pushed for time uh, NATO's mission in Libya has been prolonged already till September do you think we might see airstrikes continuing after that deadline 
Well, it could be if they don't uh, uh, get rid of uh, Qaddafi. I'm sure they're, they're sort of in it to get rid of him because that's the real goal here, not to protect civilians. That was just a stated goal. All right, Ivan Allen, thanks ever so much for your thoughts. Ben on the program, senior fellow at the Independent Institute, Washington, D.C., as you are.